Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy, or Chief Executive Anarchist, sometimes. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about Beautybox 4.0 within Adobe After Effects. Now, we're going to go over the basics of Beautybox, but we're also going to talk about the brand new feature, which is speed. And we've added even better CUDA and OpenCL support than we've ever had. So in some applications, it's real time. Uh, for example, if you have Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, you will see real-time speeds with some graphics cards. For example, we're using the new Mac Pro here with the AMD D500 in it. And in Premiere, it's real-time. Uh, and certainly, if you have a older Mac or a Windows machine and you can put an NVIDIA card into it, like a GTX 980, which is a great card, uh, you'll see real-time performance in Premiere uh, there as well. Now, unfortunately, in After Effects, it's not really set up to do real-time effects. Even if with just the video by itself, it's not going to play back in real-time. As you can see, if I take my video here and hit the spacebar, and with nothing applied to it, uh, we're still only getting 12 or 14 frames a second. So it definitely won't be real-time in After Effects, but it really won't add that much render time at all. Because we're really taking great advantage of those video cards, the GPUs on those video cards, and speeding things up. So let's uh, dive into it. We're going to go up to our effect menu and go to Digital Anarchy and select Beauty Box. And that will load it. Let's uh, get a frame that she's actually in. That's probably a little bit more useful. And as always with Beauty Box, the first thing you want to do is click on Analyze Frame. And this is going to analyze the footage use face detection and some other algorithms to determine what the skin tones are and then create a mask based on those skin tones. And so you'll see the color chips up here change once I click on Analyze Frame. So I'll click on Analyze Frame and it'll run those algorithms. You'll see that it changes the colors up here and we can take a look and see what our mask looks like. Click on Show Mask and you can see that we've got a very good mask already pretty much by doing nothing at all except clicking on Analyze Frame. Uh, there's still a little few gray splotches that we might want to deal with, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But overall, it's a very good mask, particularly for having been created automatically. And we'll turn that off for the moment. We're going to worry about the skin smoothing settings. So let's zoom in to 100%. We'll get her front and center. We probably can scoot this down a little bit. All right, so let's find a frame that she is uh, definitely in focus in. Okay, so she's pretty in focus in there, and you can see that she's got quite a bit of skin problems here, some blemishes, a little bit of acne. And we're going to turn Beauty Box back on, and you can see it does a great job of dealing with that. Now, in this case, there might be a little bit too much smoothing going on, so let's set Smoothing amount to 25, we'll set skin detail smoothing to 25, and that'll reduce the amount of skin smoothing a little bit. Dial that back just slightly. And that's going to look a little bit better. We'll increase the contrast by setting contrast enhance to 100. And you can see that adds a little bit of contrast back. One of the things about Beauty Box is that it does reduce contrast in some areas, especially where there are skin areas that are sort of near each other, but not part of the same surface, like we have with her chin and neck. So if you look at that, and we turn Beauty Box off, you can see that there's a bit more contrast with her chin. And the more we crank Beauty Box up, the more of a problem that becomes the more the chin sort of just starts blending into the neck. So this is one of the things that we want to keep an eye out for. Uh, one of the reasons I think 25-ish is a good number here. And we'll turn this on. And we might want a little bit more, but let's play around with the mask first and see what that does for us. So let's take a look at the mask. Now, some of these areas, we definitely want to have black or dark gray. Uh, her eyebrows are up here. Uh, we certainly don't want that to be smoothed out. Uh, we don't need her teeth to be smoothed out. So those are fine, but some areas like her cheeks, zoom out a little bit. 
Her neck down here. These we can probably, we'd like to expand the skin tone range so that Beauty Box is picking up those skin tones. So we're gonna select the mode and set it to the add color tool. And we can just go ahead and click on the comp window and start adding in those colors. Start expanding that skin tone range and give us a little bit better mask. Now we don't necessarily want everything to be solid white. We do want some contrast in there. And especially with darker areas of the skin, if we turn this off, you'll see that you know the creases here are very dark. There's not a whole lot of detail in there anyway, so there's not much benefit in having Beauty Box smooth that over. And if we try and select that, it's gonna select the dark areas in the rest of the footage. So it's probably gonna select more areas in her hair. And that's something that we don't want. So I think this looks pretty good. And we do have a little bit of her hair selected, but we can go into the hue, saturation, and value ranges. And let's dial those down just a little bit. And this will have the effect of increasing the contrast in the mask and removing some of the edge cases, as you can see with the hair. So that actually creates a much better mask. And now we can go back to adjusting some of the skin smoothing settings. So again, Analyze Frame is gonna give you a really good mask to begin with. Most of the time you can just use that and roll with it. If you do wanna make adjustments, you have the Add Color tool up here. You have these hue, saturation, and value ranges you can make adjustments to. So there's lots of ways to tweak the mask if you think it's necessary. And actually in this case, I'm gonna increase the skin smoothing amount just a little bit. I think uh, maybe 30 might be a little bit better. And we'll take a look at the before and after. That looks pretty good. All right, one of the other nifty things about Beauty Box is that you can do color correction right within it. And that color correction can use the mask that you just created. So we'll click on Use Mask. And we're going to give her skin a little bit of a warmer tone. Increase the hue a little bit. Add a little bit more warmth in there. And then we're going to dial back the saturation because we have a lot of red areas on her face. And it'd be nice if maybe those weren't quite so red. So we'll set that to negative 15. I'll dial back the saturation just a little bit. And again, she's not perfect, uh, and that's really not the goal of Beauty Box. Really what we're aiming for is just a layer of digital makeup. We want to sort of take off the edge that HD and 4K gives to people in terms of just seeing so much detail that you really don't want to see. And so we really want to have just a layer of digital makeup. We still want them to look real. We don't want to create this sort of plastic look. Uh, you certainly can. I mean, if you really want to crank these settings up, you know, you can see that you know, here's what we've got with Beauty Box as is. I think that's a very good look. If you really want to go for a little bit more smoothing, we can, you know, as I said earlier, we can crank this up to, say, 45. And you'll see a much more smooth area on her forehead. Uh, the downside to that is that you, again, lose some contrast down by her chin. But depending on what you're going for, that may be acceptable. You know, it just really is all sort of like, you know, adjust to taste. Whatever works for your talent, the dynamics of your picture, Viewbox gives you the tools to dial in whatever look you're going for. Now the great thing about Viewbox is like once we've set this up on one frame, it works for every frame. No matter where I move in this video clip, you can see that it keeps the settings and applies it. And it doesn't matter if she... We'll start playing this back. And you can see that it's only slightly slower than without the effect applied. But even if she does a hair flip, Beauty Box is still tracking those skin tones and keeping her skin looking great. And so that's one advantage of Beauty Box is that you know, no matter what's going on in the scene, it's tracking the skin tones no matter what, whether she leaves the image, or if she walks off scene and comes back on, if she does a hair flip, if she talks, moves her head, turns around you don't have to make any other adjustments. Just set it up on the first frame and you're good to go. Uh, if the lighting changes, then you have a different skin tone and then wherever the lighting changes, you'll have to recalibrate the plugin on that frame, but then you're good to go from that point on. Now, the last thing that I want to touch on is the use GPU down here. 
As mentioned, BeautyBox uses the GPU to speed things up. That's one of the reasons it's so fast. And in the case of the Mac Pro that I'm using, it actually has two video cards in there, so I can tell it to use multiple GPUs, and I'll speed things up even more. But if you're running into problems, this is often a good thing to turn off. If you're running into crashes or other misbehaviors, you know, we're using the GPU, After Effects is trying to use the GPU, other plugins will try and use the GPU, and with everybody trying to use that same resource, sometimes you run into crashes or other weirdness. And so if you're testing to see if it's a GPU problem, this is a very quick and easy way of, if you turn that off, it'll go into software rendering, and you can see if the GPU is causing your problem. And if it does crash, BeautyBox will try and prevent it from using the GPU on the next time you restart. If you're experiencing really slow renders, you might want to come into the About box and make sure that Enable OpenCL or Enable CUDA is turned on. Because sometimes, like I said, if BeautyBox crashes, it will automatically try and turn off the GPU so that next time you restart, you don't have that problem. But it will be a little bit slower without the GPU turned on. And of course, make sure that you have the Use GPU checkbox down here turned on as well. So that's a very useful troubleshooting tip. Uh, of course, you can always email us at sales at digitalanarchy.com. And we will be happy to share our expertise. So drop us an email if you have any questions or need some help. And that pretty much takes care of it for this tutorial. Again, the main feature with Beautybox 4.0 is just speed, allowing After Effects, Premiere, Final Cut Pro to get near real-time rendering or real-time rendering. You can see now that I have multiple GPUs on, you know, I'm getting about 10 frames a second without any effect applied at all. It was going at about 13 or 14 frames a second. So it's much faster than previous versions of BeautyBox. And of course you can download the demo at digitalanarchy.com along with demos of all of our other filters. We have some free filters up there. We have lots of other good goodies that you can download. And of course, lots and lots of information and tutorials. So thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next tutorial.